Hi there, and thank you so much for joining the live Q&A today. We are so lucky to be here with Maria and Jennifer today. They are two absolutely amazing women who have done so much to bring inspiration, education, and collaboration with the, the women with Parkinson's. So we thought it would be lovely to connect with both of them today. Um, so I feel very lucky to be amongst such gorgeous women today. So just to give you a little bit of background, you've probably read um, the bios of both ladies, but Maria was um, has been touched with Parkinson's for some time now. I believe your grandmother had Parkinson's and then you're a movement disorder specialist and then you were diagnosed with Parkinson's. So I'd say you're very well versed in Parkinson's. Um, so if I can go straight to you, Maria, can you tell us You've written Parkinson's Divas. It's had enormous worldwide acclaim. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write the book? Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here and to be talking to somebody as wonderful as you guys. Um, well, as you know, like you said, I've had Parkinson's and I've been involved with Parkinson's. Um, that was the reason why I became a doctor. So the irony of life um, that I wanted to take care of Parkinson's patients and then my grandmother developed Parkinson's and when she passed away, I developed it at a young age. I was only 38 years old. So this was something, you know, completely uh, unexpected. Of course, you know, we talk about early onset and young onset, but never really did I ever imagine myself having it or, or you know, meeting such wonderful people at such young age that, that get, you know, devastated with this disease. So, of course, um, after I had to give them my practice because it was difficult to maintain, you know, medication changes and keeping a full practice and having a toddler and you know how that goes. So I decided to take some time off to, to get, you know, myself back in, in work in order. But I realized that, you know, there really was not any literature for women, mm -hmm. for people like us. Um, that have to deal with, you know, young onset, having kids, you know, still in a young marriage, still just starting their careers, you know, still ovulating, you know, planning other pregnancies and things like that. And so I thought, you know, I think this is something, you know, I want to write about. For, for a while there, I thought I was going to do children's and I was going to, and I actually took a children's course, you know, how to become a writer for children's, but that was not my niche. <laughs> so <laughs> decided that, uh, you know, I was just going to tell my story and never did I imagine that this was going to be a hit like it's been and that it was going to be so well received and I guess it tells you that there's a need for it that you know there are women all over the world are wanting to connect and wanting somebody to make them feel like they're not alone and and the big thing that inspired me and the reason that was kind of the diva is kind of cheeky you know um and I have the book here is that you know my, my family always says I'm a diva, you know, since I was a young, you know, uh, young girl, you know, I was the eldest of, uh, of several grandkids and I was the eldest for like seven years. So my grandfather doted on me. So, you know, I was always prim and proper and, and all that. So my family always teases me, but I thought that, you know, when we wanted, I wanted a book that was going to call to women, you know, you have a thousand books of Parkinson's, but they all look so, you know, generic and medical and, you know, and so I wanted something colorful and bright and with a good, you know, that's going to say, oh, this is something for women. Uh, and so I thought, you know, something like a diva, you know, so, and, and the thing was that, you know, what do divas do? They do everything big, you know, in style. And what do we want to do with Parkinson's? We want to do big movements, you know, we want to talk loud. Loud. We, we don't want to be obnoxious, of course, but we want to, you know, express ourselves and we're still us. And that's what I wanted to empower women that they can still be beautiful and smart and have a full life, even though, you know, we may be battling with this disease, you know, because I had patients uh, and even friends when I started with this disease and they said that, you know, I haven't put on makeup. I don't wear any, you know, nice shoes anymore. I don't do my hair, you know, and I said, well, we're still young, vibrant women, you know, we still have a whole life there's no reason why we have to give that up I mean I've had to change a lot and I'm sure you too Jenny that you know you have to do things differently and have to relearn some things but you know you still can put that little you know pizzazz of your own uniqueness you know that red lipstick that I'm always wearing or you know that that blue scarf or whatever makes you you know mm -hmm. happy and so I like what your program does because you know it gets you out there motivated and doing things big and loud and trying to you know keep you going give you a reason to go and of course socialize and that's always some happy chemicals being uh delivered there so yeah 
Definitely. Maria, can I just touch on the motivation comment that you were saying? You know, you were obviously looking to inspire women to, you know, find their inner diva, to put on their lipstick, as you said. Motivation is a big factor of it. Um, have you, I'm, I'm sure you've had lots of feedback around the impact of your book. Um, Jenny is a, is a pure example of what's happened as a result of the book and the influence that it's had. Have you heard of other stories as well, just before we get on to Jennifer? Yes, it was wonderful. You know, I get stories from women like Jenny, you know, from all over the world, different countries tell me, you know, I never thought that, you know, myself as a woman anymore, you know, I just thought of myself as having an illness or having, you know, to live with this and, you know, and I forgot, or even women that say, you know, I've never worn lipstick. I wear my pink lipstick or my red lipstick and, you know, and that gives me, I put it on in the morning and it helps me get through the day. And so that to me is the biggest, you know, joy. And that keeps me going more than, you know, sometimes taking the medicine. It's just, it, it helps me to keep fighting this and to, to be out there. And so I thank you, everybody. It's obviously a personality trait. Do you think that that can be inspired in other people? I think so, because, I mean, yes, we're all different. Of course, a little, some of us are more feminine than others, a little bit more, you know, flair than others. But finding that one passion that you have, whether it's, you know, music or whether it's exercising, whether it's painting, you know, putting on makeup or whatever, just making you feel like you have something to control and that you're part of and that you're part of a bigger group that can help you conquer something to look forward every day. And it's funny because last night I was watching a movie. Uh, it was a Spanish movie. And of course now I forget the name because I'm, you know, <laughs> but uh, it, it was about women that uh, I was called um, the tribe. It's a Spanish movie, a tribu. And they found all these women had different, you know, personal issues, you know, battered and all kinds of things. And they got together to dance. And so they were now formed like the Super Mommy Dance Club. And so they got together and they helped them, you know, get over their depression, get over, it's kind of like the way I feel with this, you know, get, give you a purpose in life. Yeah. Yeah. So the Super Mommy Divas, the Super Yummy Divas. <laughs> <laughs> you've definitely inspired a movement. I might come over to Jennifer now because you've taken that and run with it and created something really special yourself. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit about what you've created? Yeah. I've really been inspired by Maria's book um, when I was diagnosed three three years ago. Yeah, it's been right on three years ago. Um, I've been through a pretty rough period, actually, just prior to being diagnosed for that 10 years leading up to my diagnosis. Prior to that, I'd had a charmed life, lots of travel, lovely family, great husband, interesting, interesting life, and I'd done a lot of things, travelled a lot, li lived in different places. But in the 10 years prior to being diagnosed, I, I lost my oldest son to a brain tumour and my father died and lost a close friend, just one after the other. And then my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer the year prior to my diagnosis and he had treatment that year and he's doing really well now. And um, when I was diagnosed, I, I was actually, like a lot of people, relieved that um, I had a diagnosis. It was a long, tortuous trip to diagnosis, probably 10 years prior to being diagnosed. Like a lot of people, I started to realise I had a, a sort of a chronic shoulder pain, was diagnosed with um, frozen shoulder and um, backache, neck ache, and, and it was really quite severe, but I could never get some ac an accurate diagnosis. And I felt like a hypochondriac because... Um, Symptoms just kept piling on one after the other. I was, I was, wasn't, my husband noticed I wasn't swinging my arm and we'd done a lot of walking. We'd walked overseas on, you know, we did the Camino Santiago in, Santiago in um, 2009 and another long walk in 2011. So he knew what I looked like when I was walking and he said, you're not swinging your left arm. And um, I thought it was just because I had a bit of arm ache, but that and a lot of other things led me to believe that I had something neurological going on also. I kept walking into the wall and trying to turn the corner into the kitchen and my, I was losing strength in my wrists and um, balance wasn't great. Um, yeah, just a lot of symptoms piling on. Um, when I was diagnosed, as I said, I was, I was relieved, but I was also feeling terrible for my family. They'd been through so much in those last few years, and, you know, and I didn't want to pile anything more onto them. And I wanted to educate myself as much as possible. What, what can I do about this to, 
Uh, I didn't know a lot about Parkinson's. I'm a registered nurse and, and midwife. I'm retired. I retired six months ago, but uh, didn't have a lot of knowledge of Parkinson's disease, and I wanted to find out a lot more about it. I knew knew a bit more than most about the brain, having had a son who had a an aggressive brain tumour. I'd um, gone down that path and learnt a bit about the brain. Um, but Maria's book, having read so many books which I found quite distressing and depressing, um, a lot written by men about men for men, um, uh, which didn't give many guidelines to women about how to handle their disease. Um, and, um, you know, it was all about five-year periods and 10-year periods and hard to see much beyond that. And then these days I don't even think about those time frames because I've met a lot of wonderful women who are so inspiring who have lived well beyond that. And um, as I said, I read your book, Maria, and uh, it was the first glimmer of light I read after having been diagnosed. And I, I thought, well, this is fantastic. Um, it, it made me smile again. <laughs> I knew I could get out yeah, my... That's the purpose. <laughs> <of> fashion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could really relate to a lot of what you said. And I love chocolate too, Maria. <laughs> I was going to wear my boa, but I couldn't find it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we weren't wearing our boas. I've got my good shoes on. <laughs> no heels, mind you. <laughs> yeah. A few months ago, I went to my younger son's wedding and um i bought some new silver shoes and i showed my little granddaughter and i said i don't know whether nana can wear these on the day i love the shoes but i had a little heel but she said oh nana you'll have to practice they're so beautiful she'd never seen me in anything like that i did wear them on the day too maria i felt good <laughs> i felt great um yeah so um then i read your book i thought i'd better do something to you know sort of um stop these symptoms that are piling on one after the other. So um, I, was, I searched the, the net and um, found Peely Warrior. Um, and I realised that the new, nearest one to me was at Manly, a place called Manly on Sydney Harbour, lovely place. Um, and rang the gentleman there, um, David, David Shearer, who's a fantastic person who r ran it um, when I rang and he, um, said, you've rung the right place. Excuse me, I'm getting a bit of a dry mouth. Oh, I know, it's the same. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, he said, you've come to the right place, Jennifer. And uh, when I went along to PD Warrior, I started a 10-week program. And um, it was hard to understand that I actually needed to do this. I think it was the nurse in me thinking, I had to sort of sort this out for myself. but. I realised straight away that I was doing the right thing and I was with a lot of other people, all different stages of their Parkinson's disease, and I could see the results really straight away. My balance um, um, and the, the assessments I was having were indicating that I was improving really, really well, and I found I was able to do a lot more than I could do when I first started. At the end of the 10 weeks, I felt terrific. And... Um, I was still working at the time. My dexterity wasn't so great. My, my last job was um, school vaccinations. I was doing immunisations at school and I, I realised I had to retire because even though I was still working and the doctor said I was capable of working, um, I felt that some, I didn't want to get to the stage where I couldn't function properly at work. So, and I was given exercises like stretching my fingers like that, which really helped when I was exercising and I still do it almost, well, I do do it every day because I find if I don't do it, um, my fingers start to stick together and I can't, can't spread them like that. I always, right. I, they're like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Tell us a little bit about the group that you started because yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Well, that's that a yeah. wonderful group. I wish I lived there. <laughs> <laughs> we can do, we can do with a visit. Yeah, yes, like we can. Yeah. Um, from, from going to PD Warriors, I met two lovely ladies, um, Janice Rowan and Larissa Richards, who L Larissa was very young, um, just turned 40, I think, when I met her. Two young children, um, Janice a lot younger than I am too, but they'd both been diagnosed a few years prior to me. And um, 
we sort of got together for a coffee a few times and we enjoyed each other's company so much and realised that we we're able to, you know, get knowledge from each other. We're, we're sharing knowledge uh, and enjoyed a chat and shared the experience of how hard it was to get diagnosed in the first place, how hard it was to access information and, and for women, how hard it is to access information that's relevant. And I told them about um, Parkinson's Diva and your book and, and they, told, they gave me information too that was really handy. And then one day we had this thought, well, you know, why can't we help some of the other ladies in that we see and we talk to? They're all going down the same track. They, they get a diagnosis one day and see you later from the neurologist. We'll see you in three months' time. And, um, you know, in the meantime, you quite often you've got nothing to work with. Uh, I think um, a lot of the neurologists are giving a lot more information these days, but three years ago, a lot of us were getting not much information at all. Um, anyway, we just we said, let's invite a few more ladies and, and our morning teas were extending to lunches because we we're enjoying our chats. So um, we invited a few other ladies and they were keen to come. One lady stands out in my mind always, I won't mention her name, but she came to one of our first lunches and like a few of the ladies, they come and just looking at them, you can tell they're thinking, I'm not sure if I want to be here. I don't want to be part of a group of people with a aggressive neurological disease. Um, and they're, they're half in the door and you're thinking, well, have we got them or not? And it's amazing. This particular lady I'm thinking of came the second time and I wasn't expecting her to. First time she didn't talk much at all to anybody, didn't give us much information at all. The next day she had a smile on her face, she started chatting. We, month by month when we met for our lunches, she's just a new person. She started buying new clothes. Her husband actually um, saw me in the street afterwards one day and said, you couldn't believe the difference in my wife. She's in the family. We can see this change in her now. She's got new friends. She's got... Um, she feels comfortable. She feels part of something, and it's amazing what this is doing for her. And um, she's one of the lights of our group at the moment, and she's terrific. And I'm sure she wouldn't even mind me saying it. She probably knows who she is. Um, <laughs> it happens so many times. Uh, we've got quite a few young people joining us now. The youngest is 36. She's just turned 36. Um, she was 35 when she was diagnosed. We've got several in their 30s and 40s, and they're going through these issues of um, fertility and pregnancy and um, having young children, the difficulty of raising young children with Parkinson's when you've got a diagnosis of Parkinson's. Um, and, yeah, it's, um, we're doing lots of things in the group. It's just going from strength to strength, really. Uh, Larissa started the art workshop, which I go to too. It's fantastic. Uh, we've got a great teacher who's who's aware of how therapeutic different types of art are, and we and she gets everyone to produce something worth worthwhile. It's amazing. Um, uh, we go on outings. We've got guest speakers coming, and um, a couple of people have offered to be, to give us some talks this year, which would be very interesting. Um, yeah, I think what you've touched on really, and and certainly what you're promoting in your book. Maria, is the change in perspective that I think people can go through and how powerful it is when you go from a situation where Parkinson's has historically been a, a diagnosis of doom and gloom and there hasn't been a lot of hope given and now we know there's so much literature and evidence available about how people can improve and live a better life and manage the condition better. I think it does lend itself to perspective, but it's books like this, this one here and it's, it's the groups of yourself where it's bonding a community, like-minded individuals that want to thrive and have the best life possible, even with a condition as Parkinson's. There's still a lot of life and adventure to be had and I think it's the change in perspective that we certainly notice through exercise, but community and network and support is, I think, absolutely as important. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And often underestimated. Yeah. It, yeah. So, Maria, you're writing a second book, um, and I think it's probably along the same lines. I've got a little extract here that you've sent us. You work, it's a workbook, Journal for Women with Parkinson's. It's available in April, which we're really excited to, mm. to hear. 
Um, this workbook is yours to help redefine yourself with Parkinson's in a manner of your choosing to reach new altitudes as you forge a new path to achieve your goals, whether new or old. I just love that. I think that speaks to what we do, what you're trying to achieve. It's just so aspirational and and brilliant. Thank you. So is there anything else you can tell us about your book? Well, I wish it was already out and I, I was hoping to get a picture of the, of the cover, but I don't have it yet. As soon as I have it, I will, I will get it to you. But uh, I got inspired with this because this is kind of the things that um, has helped me in my life and helping my patients. Because like you said, you know, we used to as physicians sometimes just say, you have this disease, go live with it, take this medicine. Now what? Okay, so we need to be able to say, okay, I can do this for myself and I can learn to live with this. Of course, you know, I wish there was a cure and maybe we'll be having a cure sometime soon. But right now there isn't. But there's lots of treatment. There's lots of hope. Um, for one, you know, we're doing this exercises, which I'm glad you're doing. I've been preaching this for before or right after I got diagnosed, just like just like strokes. I mean, 50 years ago, we used to say that, oh, they had a stroke, sorry, go live with it. You know, now we know that if you rehab them, they can get better. And so the same thing I said, you know, with Parkinson's, we've never really done anything. We just assumed that they were just going to go home and die and sit away and wither away. But they actually can get better. The parts of the brain, their functioning can regenerate and can recuperate. Maybe we can even recuperate the ones that are lost, but we're working on that. And so that's the whole premise of this book, that you can be empowered to do different alternative I guess therapies, medicines, if you will, that, you know, like art therapy and singing and dancing and uh, writing and doing all these things to help you, one, find self-love, because I think it all starts from there. If you can't love yourself and accept mm -hmm. yourself and have a change of heart with what you have, then you're not, no matter how many medicines we throw at you, no matter how many programs we give you, no matter how many support groups, you're not going to do well. So it's something that you have to embrace and have to take it in yourself and say, yes, I am empowered. Yes, I, this is who I am. And, you know, I'm going to start from this. Whatever your step is, you know, whatever your, your disease stage is, I'm going to start from this and I'm going to move forward. Even if sometimes it's, you know, a, at a crawl, you know, like a millimeter, you know, sometimes it's one minute at a time. But as long as you keep moving forward. And that's what this book is about. It's about, you know, doing activities. I had, I had this wonderful groups like I had Jenny in mind when doing this book and her group that something that the women's groups that are growing around the country and around the world can sit down and say, hey, let's do these activities together. And let's see if we can learn from each other how to strengthen each other and boost each other and get through our fears and our you know, weaknesses and, and try to move forward and try to break those barriers. So some so those this activities, which some are in group and some you can do on your own, um, you know, that's the purpose behind them. I hope that that, that works out and that, uh, that that motivates people and that you can find it useful and find it that maybe we can move it on to other diseases or to other, you know, to men as well. But I just thought of, you know, something whimsical right now with the diva, you know, so lots of color, lots of pictures and, you know, affirmations and, and activities to do to, again, with the women in mind, you know, activities that we as women would like to do. So hopefully it would be something I'm hoping to have it down by, by uh, April, by Awareness Month. So we're working on that. <laughs> That's fantastic. So it's called, Maria. Yeah, it's called Hello Possibilities, a journal mm -hmm. for, um, for, for your daily walk with Parkinson's. Fantastic. So, I mean, what you're saying, I mean, honestly, it's from the same song sheet that we speak from here. Do you... Do you find many other people, particularly neurologists and movement disorder specialists, that are of the same opinion? Because it's you know we're slowly getting there. I mean, of course, in science and medicine, you know, we've been trained to do things in such a way, and mm -hmm. it's very hard to break from that. You know, from that routine. Uh, when I was writing the first book, I would say that you know, if it's a if it sounds like a hoof, if it's this, you know, it's a, it's a horse, but I'm always saying it could be a zebra. And my, you know, my, my editor was like, what do you mean zebra? You know, because in med, you, you train to recognize common things being common. But my whole premise is that 
we have to look for that uncommon sometimes. We have to think outside the box. And sometimes in order to get better, we have to do outside of the box techniques because you know this this disease affects all of us in different ways and we're all very unique individuals and it affects us differently so you know what may work for Jenny may not work for me you know so we have to find different ways but still come up with the same um, you know end result of being motivated of have, helping our brain you know reconnect and rediscover and relearn things so whatever way you can find it then that's what we want of course unfortunately we do need our medicines we can't cure it with you know just these things but it really in my experience I have found that people that are involved have a passion helping others they do so much better they have hope um, and you know, they don't need as much medications. So yeah. I think that it really does help in the long run. It's that positive attitude, positive, you know, brain mind connection, you know, that you got to start from the inside out. You can't start healing somebody from the outside. If you don't know what's going on in their life, if they got a lot of issues, they don't even want to accept that they have a disease and they're ashamed, you yes. know, it's going to be very hard. The people, the people themselves to accept it for themselves and also the people around them um, I know when I was working and working with registered nurses one day someone said to me Jenny you don't look as though you've got Parkinson's one of the other people in the room said oh there's all different forms of Parkinson's you know right. <laughs> that's, that's good, Parkinson's. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, you also I think public awareness is, oh, sorry Maria no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Public awareness, I think, is is really important as well. I mean, seeing it from the other side these days, it's um, you're certainly aware that there still is a stigma in a lot of areas, in, in a lot of, amongst a lot of people. Not everybody, some people are fantastic, but, um, and a lot of people are aware, but there's a lot of people who aren't aware, who don't like to talk about Parkinson's with the person with Parkinson's, um, and can still be ashamed. A lot of, a lot of, I shouldn't say particularly men, but the people I've met who do it were men um, who sit on their hand to try and disguise the fact that their hand is shaking. Um, I think these people need support in fessing up to all their um, symptoms and um, then a lot of support. We say, you know, our group, I think, is very good at, at supporting and motivating and, and inspiring. We've got all the various types of treatment going on in our group. We've got um, two that have got deep brains, had deep brain stimulation, um, two with duodopa, one waiting to have it, and one with apomorphine therapy. So they're able to just give a lot of handy advice to the people going on to have those experiences as well. Um, um, sorry, I've just lost my train of thought. Um, we're just mainly in the group. Yeah, treatments in the group, they're getting all that sort of experience and, and that will be good for research. Um, having a group of women together to do research on and I know that some of the postgrad students are interested in coming to speak to us and, and, and a lot of us are involved in research um, projects in, in Sydney. Mm. Um, yeah. Can I interrupt there for a second? Just because I know I'm just conscious of time, Maria, for you being quite late. Um, it's oh, the beginning of, you're okay. It's the beginning of 2019. Can I ask what your goals are? Because I know, you know, in reading, uh, your goals were to become a neurologist, tick, to write two books, essentially tick. What's the next big goal for you? Well, that's exactly what I was, you know, writing my resolution, trying to think, okay, you know, vision, what is my vision? And I think it's to continue um, inspiring women to continue writing and working side by side with women like Jenny, with, with women like yourself, trying to really change um, the way that not just, you know, research goes, but the way physicians ourselves treat and see, you know, the disease, see women that, you know, that we're not you know, pigeonhole into a stereotype, you know, that even when you come in with, you know, like I was having lately, I was having a lot of sweating issues. They said, well, you know, you're at that age, you're hormonal. And I'm like, well, I didn't think I was at any age. I mean, mm -hmm. I still think I'm young. And so, you know, and, and not to just assume that, you know, that there's something that is quote unquote, you know, female hormones and things. And it turns out I had some other illness. And so, you know, it, it's just that we have to 
also be uh, empowered enough and have knowledge enough to, to stand up for yourself. And you know, we know our bodies. Yes, physicians do know and have the training, but you have to find the mesh, the, the combination, the, uh, the bridge where you can meet, say, hey, okay, you have the knowledge, but I know what my body's like, so let's work together. Somebody that listens, somebody that, that understands where you're going and has a plan for long-term, not just like, okay, let's get you to this medicine, come back in six months or in a year. You know, what are my goals? What do I want to do with my life? Um, you know, do I want to still work? Do I want to be able to visit my grandchildren? Do I want to be able to take care of my, you know, my kids? And those are things that we never really thought about, you know, because I think in the past, um, we had such few medications that really our goal was just to keep them from falling and choking to death, okay? Mm -hmm. And and then managing the ups and downs of the levodopa, of the dyskinesias. But now, fortunately, we have a whole slew, since I became a physician, uh, a whole slew of medications that can ha allow us to actually have a full life. So now we're starting to be, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I get a little fatigued, I get a little bit, but it's okay. We want to have the best life possible and we have the resources. And so we need to, be able to educate people that there are those treatments and that you can have a, a better life and that, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, you know, and that you're not going to end up, you know, in a nursing home or, or whatever you may, but you know, there's a lot of other things that can happen. And, and that's the whole thing that still have a positive life. I mean, my daughter just turned 18. She was three years old, you know, and of course there were times that I thought, oh my God, I can't, you know, I can't make it through this, but um, you have to kind of, the one thing I've learned with having a disease, whether it's Parkinson's or anything else, um, more so than being a doctor is priorities. You know, you can have it all. I mean, you have to, you can have all the things that you really want that are important to you, but you can't possibly do everything to everybody all of the time. There's just not, even if you were the healthiest person on earth, there's just not enough time. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to prioritize what is important to me. My daughter has been the most important thing to me. Mm -hmm. I know that I didn't have much energy. So if I knew my daughter was going to have some activities that I was going to have to, I wanted to be there, wanted to be present, wanted to drive around, I would say no to everything else. Say, hey, you know, this is my time to be home, to rest, so that tonight or this evening when my daughter requires me, to be present, I am present. And so, you know, those are the kind of things that sometimes are hard to choose, them, but that's what this book, you know, the, the journal is about, you know, prioritizing what's important, valuing yourself. It's okay to say no, you know, letting the good stuff in and letting the bad stuff out, you know, so mm -hmm. that's kind of what the goal is. You're quite an unusual phys physician, I'd have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> I hear that all the time. I bet you do. I bet you do. And Jennifer, what goals have you got for the year? Yeah, so I have still got some energy left. And and I've I've renewed a lot of that energy. And and strangely enough, I feel probably happier in myself than I've felt in a long time because I, I do know what's wrong with me. Uh, for a long time I felt as though I must be a hypochondriac, but I, uh, well, I felt as though I was, but I, I knew I wasn't. Um, and I, I, I want to try and live the best life I possibly can, um, enjoy my grandchildren, enjoy my, my husband, who's the best friend I've got, and all of my family and friends, and to help other women to get through it too, because um, I know that just such a little bit of help, and I have got a bit of knowledge and some skills um, in accessing information for them. And quite often you, you see ladies suffering terrible dyskinesias and they may need to ring their neurologist and get their medication altered, but they hadn't thought of doing that till they saw them in another few months. Um, just little things you can do to help improve their lives. And it's, you know, I'm not, not doing anything major, but just helping them steer, get steer, steering them, helping them to steer themselves um, through Parkinson's. I think it's giving me so much satisfaction at the moment and got a whole lot of new friends and, and Larissa and, and Janice also, uh, uh, you know, they're helping with all of it as well. So it's fantastic, the feeling we're getting and the feedback we're getting from just organising a group of friends to get together for lunch. We've all got Parkinson's. Nobody minds if you're jerking or dribbling or um, not yourself today. We, we all go through those days. So 
they all feel very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. We've started a um, phone a friend group too because that's one of the other things I'd like to see changed. Even in um, the city areas, uh, people say it, it's so much worse in the country. But even in the city areas, there are a lot of um, women who um, who haven't got access to to help. Um, the help may be there, but they need help in accessing the help. Um, what I'm saying is, I, I guess when their, their disease has progressed, um, they're finding it very hard to even pick up the phone and ring the right people. Uh, and if we can just give those people a little bit of a help, help they, they've often got family, but either the family are worn out or the, the person themselves doesn't like to keep asking for help because they've um, they say they're busy or, um, you know, they, they just don't want to keep asking them all the time. So I think if we can just phone them as a friend uh, and give them a little bit of help. But, um, yeah, I think just to do what we're doing and try and get it better. Um, but I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting you in Me person. Too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with our boas and our, you know, little crowns. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just look for the ladies in boas. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think all the ladies like that. So. <laughs> well, we'll wrap up there, but if anybody's interested and you're not aware of this book, it's called Parkinson's Beavers. You can grab a copy of this, and then we've got Hello Possibilities that Maria will be le releasing in April. And check that out. And if you need to get in touch with Jennifer or the Parkinson's Divas Lunch Group, how would people get in touch with you? I've got a um, private Facebook, which is called Parkinson's Diva Lunch Group, and you can um, join th through that. But if you don't, if you're not on Facebook, um, get in touch with me, and I'll get my people to talk to your people. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Ladies, it's been an absolute pleasure. You're both so Thanks inspirational. So I love what you've both done and how you're so passionate about helping women with Parkinson's globally, essentially, and in, in a local context. It's wonderful. So thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to seeing what you both get up to in 2019. <laughs> thank you very much. God bless you. Take awesome. care. You too. Thanks, Thanks Maria. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.